This video is going to cover the basics of turning a fraction into a decimal. Be sure you have the date and topic at the top of your page. The essential question that we will be covering is how do we convert a fraction into a decimal? This is a question that comes up for students when they are struggling to use a calculator with fractions. Fractions, they'll often um, ask me how to turn a fraction into a decimal so they can plug it into a calculator. Of course, there are many more significant reasons for why we need to be able to do this operation. There are many fractions that we all know immediately as decimals. Right? We all know that one half is written as one half, right, as five tenths. We also know that three fourths is 75 hundredths. Right? Most of us even know that one third is three tenths repeating. Right? Some of us know that as well. There are of course other things that we know such as any fraction with a denominator with a multiple of 10 right? is pretty straightforward. Three tenths, just by the sound of it, I would write as three tenths. Or 42 hundredths, we can write really easily as 42, there's my decimal point, hundredths. There are many fractions, however, that we don't know the equivalent decimals. Luckily, there is a process we can use to find it. The first thing we want to remember is that the line that we see here that divides the numerator from the denominator in a fraction is just that, right? This is a division bar. We've seen that in other places. Right? But it's a good reminder here that that line is a division bar. So to find the decimal equivalent fraction, we need to divide the numerator by the denominator. I'll show you this with a fraction that we all know. We'll start with 1 half. This means that 1 is going to be divided by 2. The numerator here is our dividend. It's getting divided. So I'm going to set this up and I'm going to put the 1 inside here to get divided. The divisor is our denominator, right? It's what's doing the dividing. So here's my 2 on the outside. So of course we can't divide 1 by 2, but we have a process for that. Where I'll add a decimal and some trailing zeros. All right, let me extend this just a bit. And now we can divide as normal, right? I don't have to do anything with my divisor. This is already a whole number. So I'm just going to put my decimal straight up in my answer. And I'm going to divide with my normal process here. So this does not go into 1, but 2 does go into 10 five times. And I can do all these zeros if I want to, right? But they won't have any bearing on the answer. I got 1 half, which we all know is the equivalent to the fraction 1 half. So that just sort of proved that this process will work with a fraction that we already knew. Let's try it now again with a fraction we might not already know. Let's try it with 5 eighths. So again, I'm going to take my numerator, and I kind of think, think of it as the numerator falling in to the house, right? It falls in, and then the 8 here, my denominator, is outside. We know we can't divide 8 into 5, so I'm going to add my decimal and some trailing zeros. Right. My divisor is already a whole number. I don't have to deal any, do anything there, so I'm just going to put my decimal in my answer, in my quotient, and I'm going to go ahead and use my normal process here. And it looks like I'm going to have to do this a few times until I can get my answer the way it needs to be. I'm going to stop when I have nothing left to bring down, nothing left over, and it looks like it's right here. My quotient is the decimal equivalent. So 5 eighths is equivalent to 625 thousandths. Those two values are equivalent. Here's one you can try on your own. Right, let's see what 2 ninths would be as a decimal Right, by going through our division process. Pause the video, give it a try on your own, and then we'll see how you did. How'd you do? Did you notice 
that 2 ninths becomes the decimal 0 0.2 essentially, right? But that 2 is going to repeat forever. Remember, the essential question of this video was to show the steps for converting a fraction to a decimal. We only saw a few examples of this, right? But it will work every time and we'll have a chance to practice it a bit more together in class.